Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 15th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a yet another diary from one of our sans.edu bachelor's degree interns. And in this case, it's Preston Fitzgerald writing about some troubleshooting he did on our honeypot. One of the things these interns are really helpful with is to debug issues with our honeypot. And Preston had, well, uh, the nice experience, I think, here to deal with one of the sort of little odd issues that sometimes prop up in systems like this. Really like the diary. It's not sort of your standard, hey, this is an attack kind of diary, but instead sort of walks you through the process of troubleshooting this problem. Really important skill for anybody out there to be able to troubleshoot systems like that. And if you have used Ubuntu Linux for a while, you probably have run into this little feature in Ubuntu. You type a command on the command line, you got it slightly typed wrong, and then it suggests what command you may want to execute, but it also may suggest what package to install in order to install the command that you try to execute. Very common command here, ifconfig, no longer installed by default on Ubuntu. So if you type it, it will then tell you, hey, you probably want to install the NetTools package. Well, researchers at Aqua now looked into how does Ubuntu come up with these suggestions. There is a special package that's installed that implements this feature called command not found. And it essentially reads information from apt and snap in order to come up with these suggestions. And as Aqua did find out, it's possible to then deploy malicious, in particular, snaps to the snap store, but also in some cases, APT packages that will suggest to the user to install this malicious package. This is in particular a problem if a well-known legitimate package is only available as an APT and not available as a snap. In that case, an attacker could essentially grab the snap name for this particular package and typically snaps are suggested ahead of apt which then makes them more likely to be installed and same of course also then for any typos that the user makes well they could be mapped to lookalike packages that will install malware interesting uh, research here not exactly sure if there's a great fix for it other than always double check if you do get these uh, suggestions whether these are actually legitimate packages and then we have, well, uh, sort of some cleanup Wednesday work to do here following Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. Checkpoint published an interesting blog post with additional details regarding one of the Outlook vulnerabilities. The problem here was that uh, clicking on the link in Outlook or uh, following a link in Outlook in a preview could potentially leak NTLM credentials. Well, the problem here is, of course, that uh, the user will follow an SMB link, which shouldn't really work. But the trick to bypass the protection here is pretty straightforward. In addition to using the normal beginning of the URL file colon, then three slashes and two backslashes to indicate an SMB link. The attacker just has to add an exclamation mark and a random string at the end of the URL, which will bypass Microsoft's protection for Outlook and the user will then be redirected to the SMB share. Very trivial to exploit, certainly, and as such, probably being exploited right now. I think the best guidance out of all of this, and I've probably mentioned this many, many times before, is block port 445 on your firewall. Make that for TCP and UDP, given that Quick may also be used in more recent versions. And then a couple of vulnerabilities that I didn't get uh, to mention uh, yesterday. We do have updates from Adobe. 
Adobe Commerce, also known as Magento, did receive updates for five different vulnerabilities. Two of them have a CFSS score of 9.1, leading to arbitrary code execution. However, the exploit requires admin privileges. And Adobe Acrobat and Reader did receive patches for 13 different vulnerabilities, six of which may lead to arbitrary code execution. In addition to that, we also got updates from AMD for processor vulnerabilities and a newly exploited vulnerability in a Roundcube webmail system. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.